Hey, I'm Matt from Online Business Tech, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at TechSmith Camtasia and OBS and how they compare for recording the screen on your computer. So the first thing I wanna get out of the way right out of the gate is price. OBS is completely free, it's open source, and it's available for Mac, PC, and Linux, while Camtasia costs $249 and it's made for Mac and PC. But keep in mind that Camtasia actually comes with a complete video editing suite. So OBS is just a screen recorder while Camtasia includes the screen recorder and the video editing suite. So how do Camtasia and OBS compare in regards to the actual screen capture feature? So first of all, both of these programs will allow you to record a screen in a number of different ways. So with Camtasia, Camtasia can record a full screen or a custom area on your screen. So you can either drag these handles to resize the capture area, um, or you can type in the exact width or height or select one of these preset sizes. Now, one feature that's really nice is the lock to application feature. So this will actually snap the capture window to the active window, and now when you resize the capture area, it actually resizes the window precisely along with it. OBS also has the ability to capture full screen using its display capture source. Now, side note here, having multiple monitors makes it a lot easier. Um, otherwise, you're faced with a sort of like inception situation. So I think Camtasia's preview overlay deals with this a little bit better than OBS, but um, again, if you have multiple monitors, it's it makes it a lot easier to set up your screen capture. Now, if you only want part of your screen captured, you can hold down the Alt key to crop the display capture to a specific area on your screen. But if you're trying to snap to a specific window, it's kind of tough to get it to the correct size and location because it doesn't have like a snap feature, so it won't snap to the actual window. Now, OBS does have a separate source type called window capture that does lock to a specific window, but the problem is it doesn't allow you to actually resize the window to a specific size like Camtasia does. And a big drawback to window capture is it doesn't capture any context windows or pop-ups. It's literally just the window that you selected. So if you're trying to create like a, a software tutorial um, or something like that, this capture type doesn't really work well because you're gonna be missing um, any context menus or pop-ups that appear while you're recording. So you're kind of stuck with just using the display capture feature and just resizing it manually, which can be a little tedious. But I can offer you one tip. You can download a free program called Sizer that will resize windows for you to um, any custom size or preset size that you want. All right, next, let's talk about overlays. So where OBS really shines is when it's used for live streaming. So the whole idea behind OBS is to configure scenes ahead of time that you can switch between while streaming or recording. So what scenes do is they toggle which sources are active at any given moment. So maybe you have a scene that shows your screen and then you have another scene that shows your camera. And while you're recording or streaming, you can switch between those scenes on the fly. So you can make as many scenes as you want, and within each scene, you can have several sources active at once. So for instance, um, you might have a screen shown in one scene, and then on top of that, you might have a logo watermark in the corner, and then you might have a webcam, uh, feed on top of that in another corner, and there's all sorts of sources available that will allow you to do some pretty advanced stuff. And you can resize and position each of these sources however you want. And of course, you're gonna want audio in this as well, so you're gonna include an audio source in the scene as well. And then maybe you would have another scene where it's just a large view of your video feed for when you're addressing the camera directly. So now you have a setup where you can just switch back and forth between these scenes live while you're recording, which is really cool. So yeah, this is like really cool, especially for live streaming. 
Um, but the only potential drawback to this workflow is if you're recording it, you just have to be aware that everything is set in stone when you record it. So there's no way to like go back and hide the webcam in order to show something that was behind it. You know, like once the video is recorded, that's it, it's burnt in there. So it's not necessarily a bad workflow, it's just that sometimes it's better to have all of these sources recorded separately and then arranged together in your video editing software in post-production. So this also removes some of the pressure from you while you're recording because you can just focus on recording and not have to worry about um, any of the other overlays and stuff like that. Um, and of course, it's totally possible to just record your screen using OBS. You don't have to use all these overlay features. Um, and then you can record your camera using something else. So basically there's like no advantage in using Camtasia if that's what you wanna do. You could use OBS or Camtasia, doesn't make a difference. Now Camtasia does allow you to record a single webcam and audio device during the screen record as well as system audio, but they are recorded separately and can be arranged in the editing software once the recording is complete, giving you complete control over the final product. With OBS, you have a lot more flexibility in the types of capture sources and the number of capture sources that you can record at once. So you can have multiple audio inputs, multiple webcam inputs, all recorded at the same time. All right, so that brings me to Camtasia Studio. So when you buy Camtasia, you get not only the uh, Camtasia recording software, but the Camtasia Studio editing suite, which is a complete video editing program. So OBS is strictly a recording program, so if you need to edit the video afterwards, you have to do it in another program. So while OBS is definitely superior for live streaming and showing all sorts of different overlays and sources on the fly, Camtasia has some of that functionality as well. The only difference is you add all of that stuff once you've finished recording instead of doing it on the fly while you're recording. So you can add stuff like static annotations, like text, you can stretch it out over uh, the timeline for however long you want the annotation to appear, and maybe you want it to fade in gradually, so you might add a transition to it. But they also have these blur and highlight annotations that are really cool that allow you to highlight parts of the screen. And you've got other transitions and text and cursor effects, but one thing uh, that I do want to mention about Camtasia Studio that I absolutely love is how it handles zooming into the screen, so pan and zoom. So if you want to zoom in on a certain part of your screen, you just add the zoom feature, you drag the handle to resize how far in it's going to zoom, and then you can just stretch it out to however long you want that zoom to occur, and it transitions in and out really nicely. And another feature of Camtasia is its screen annotation tools. So while you're recording, you can activate these annotation tools to draw on the screen while you're recording. So that's a pretty useful tool as well. So personally, I've been using Camtasia on my other YouTube channel for about five years, maybe even longer. Um, but I started editing my videos in Adobe Premiere instead of Camtasia Studio. So now the issue I've had is every time I wanna create a screen capture, I still need to go through Camtasia Studio in order to export the file into a usable file format because by default, the screen recordings are saved in a proprietary format. So they do have the option um, for you to save directly to AVI or extract an AVI pretty much instantly, but I've had a lot of problems with that um, with like the cursor not showing up correctly or the video itself will just be like really glitchy. So I'm still forced to go through that export process to create an MP4 that I can use every time I do a screen capture. So that can be a real pain. So recently I've been experimenting with OBS and I've gotta say I really like that I can save directly to MP4 and it's in the exact output resolution that I wanna use. So. Although I have had challenges with getting the capture window and program window aligned properly, I've actually created a custom script that automates the entire process. And uh, yeah, it seems to be working pretty, pretty good for me so far. And I actually did a video 
explaining on how I set that up and I'll link to that in the description as well. But overall, I would say that Camtasia is a little bit more user-friendly, has great screen annotation tools, and it offers um, a sort of like all-in-one solution for creating screen recording videos if you're willing to use Camtasia Studio for doing the editing. But OBS is definitely the clear winner for live streaming, and it has a lot more flexibility in what it can capture. Plus, you can't really beat the price, being that it's free. So, all right, so I'll have links below to both of these programs if you wanna check them out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will see you in the next video.